morning, good afternoon, good evening. Looks like I have a little white balance problem to fix here real quick. Welcome to another episode of the Community Live Stream. My name is Chuck Tomasi, just tweaking the colors a little bit to get rid of that fuzzy blue cloud up there. Make sure that it's the right screen. I did all this checking a little while ago, and for whatever reason, other way, other way, other way, there we go. <laughs> For whatever reason, it wasn't a problem five minutes ago. So let's continue on. This is the joy of doing things live and the joy of doing things by yourself. <laughs> Again, welcome to the community live stream. My name is Chuck Tomasi. I'm the service now guy with the cool bow tie. And you are watching, haven't got the alert yet. We'll see if it shows up. You are watching the live stream where I go through the questions and answers and give you the explanation behind some of those answers in the community. ServiceNow community is an online forum where customers can post their questions, insights, create blog entries, whatever happens in there happens. So this is completely unscripted as you can tell right from the top of the show. This is Monday, September 24th, 2018 and I am so glad you're here joining me today. If you're watching live on YouTube, let's do the pre-roll. If you're watching live on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. You could subscribe to the channel there and theoretically, theoretically, get an alert like that. It just came in. So as we watch, more people will join. Give a shout out in the chat. Say, hello, how are you? Where are you from? How's the weather? Simple questions like that. I'm happy to interact. You may even spot some things in the community as I'm posting or typing or coding that you can correct me on. So thank you very much for joining and look forward to interacting with you in that way. If you've got something, well, before we go any further, this show is also simulcast on Twitch. So if you want to watch there, twitch.tv slash now community is the place to go. I believe it's on the URL right over there. <laughs> yep, it is. Okay, good. And uh, same kind of thing. Happy to play along at home, watch. There's so people who choose to watch there, thank you, thank you very much for, for joining and contributing there as well. If you've got something more than a simple hello, how are you, how's the weather, be sure to go to community, community.service.com, community.servicenow.com. Wow, it's early, still early, Monday morning. Gotta love Monday. <laughs> you go over there and post your question because that is a better system of record. I likely will not be answering questions beyond the simple conversation in the chat because you really can't search YouTube that well. When you search the internet and say, service now, email notifications, complex condition, that's not going to come up. It's going to search websites, including our community. So be sure that you put that there in the community. If you are new to the community, here's some basic guidelines that you may want to pay attention to. Things like one question per post, include images, they're worth a fortune going through a uh, discussion right now where I just asked somebody, hey, uh, saying that something doesn't work doesn't really help all that much. Provide some context behind that. Make sure you put it in the right, uh, right forum. If it's a developer question, put it in the developer community. If it's a question on performance analytics and reporting, performance analytics and reporting. There are people who monitor those channels specifically for those types of questions and can help. Those are the subject matters you subject matter experts you want to reach. So happy Monday, Carolyn. Good to see you, Andrew Barnes. <laughs> Early it is. Community is the place to store the questions and answers. Andrew Barnes on board. We'll be seeing Andrew Barnes next week. Uh, no, in a couple of days. It's already next week. <laughs> a couple of days in San Diego for developer days. Looking forward to that. And uh, who knows where else we'll be. Uh, Pratik, good to see you. Always amazing to learn new things here. Thank you. I'll try my best again today. Happy, happy, good morning, everyone. Uh, Paul is checking in as well. So glad to see you here. If you've been on the community for a while, some additional thoughts you might want to have. Create a blog content. Goran Lundquist has just put in a new blog entry with a video that he did about putting reports uh, into Service Portal. Simple plugin you have to turn on and then you get a widget that you can place reports into a Service Portal. Pretty cool. Didn't know about that. Thought it was very helpful. So we went back and forth this weekend about his audio and his video and how he's producing stuff. And I can't wait to see what else he comes up with. So very smart guy. Look for more community information there. If you've got some tips or tricks, 
be sure to share them in the community as well. If you want to get your own personal developer instance and learn more about ServiceNow, you can get your personal developer instance at the developer portal, developer.servicenow.com, totally free. Kingston, London, I believe... What came first? JKL. Yes, Jakarta is still available. <laughs> if you've got Jakarta in your organization, you're looking to upgrade, this might be a good opportunity. Load some of that sample data, load some of that sample uh, code on there and do the upgrade, get the experience before you even bring it into your enterprise. You can also find all of our scripting APIs over there. You can find learning plans, free learning plans. You can really learn a lot for zero cost over at developer.servicenow.com. We also have a number of developer meetups that I encourage you to check out. And those can also be found over at meetup.com at the URL you see right there on the bottom of the screen. There's a number of them coming up this week. More coming up in October. October is rapidly approaching. I can't believe it's the 24th of September already. My goodness, it goes by very, very fast. We are even planning meetups out into October and December. So if there is a meetup in your area, please check the meetup URL there. There's over 50 chapters globally. I encourage you, get together with these people. They're wonderful people. We're Lots of great topics from code reviews to just social get-togethers and talking shop and what do you do and where do you work? How do you, how, what are your challenges uh, to everything in between? The latest in London, I believe Sacramento is doing the, the latest London features in a couple of days. So look forward to that if you're in that area. Try to stop by. If there isn't one in your area, reach out to us. We'd love to get in touch with you and start that chapter and encourage and grow this community as effectively as possible. Shadi, good morning to you. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. As I mentioned first thing at the top of the show, wherever you are and whenever you are, this is the community live stream, which I will be getting to in just a moment. We also have other events like Now Forum, Now Summit, Snug Meetings, uh, Expos, tons of stuff over at the servicenow.com slash events.html page. Of course, you can always just go to servicenow.com and look for the events and click that. But uh, you're smart people. I thought I'd give you the full URL. <laughs> Lots of good stuff. You can look it up by region. You can look it up by calendar. You can say, hey, what's coming in October and start planning that way. You can say, what's coming in December. A lot of stuff, I will, will admit, a lot of this stuff shows up sort of at the last minute, like a week or two before. So keep an eye on that to see what's in your area and to see what's on the calendar that might fit your schedule over at the events page. Uh, the other one that I want to mention is tomorrow. Man, can't believe it's tomorrow already. It feels like I've been talking about this forever. And then we'll start talking about the October TechNow meeting. Uh, TechNow is our web series that we've been doing since early 2013. So over five and a half years worth of content between uh, me and Andrew Kincaid and Dave Slusher, Craig Stepp. Now Stacy Bailey's added the team. Really happy to have her on board. Can't wait to see what she comes up with. Uh, she will be doing primarily the contact in November as we talk about virtual agent. But tomorrow we will be talking about integration hub and extending the capabilities by adding your own actions into a collection we call a spoke. So that's what a custom spoke is. It's a collection of actions. And Craig is going to build this out live. We've got a community quick tip that you won't want to miss because that's inspired by this show. As I see things, as I hear things, as I read things on the community, I go, that's interesting. I didn't realize that not everybody knew this, or there's a question around what I thought was a very common thing. It may be on a video somewhere. It may be on uh, a training document somewhere, but we we've, we've get people in here that say, hey, how do you add, uh, I, I saw this thing on a list, or I saw this thing on a record. How do you do that? And we can show you in just a couple of minutes some very useful information. So the quick tip is something we added that was inspired by this show. Very happy. Register at the URL you see there on the bottom of the screen. It's going to be a webinar, live interactive Q&A, so we'll do our best to keep up. If we can't answer everything, guess where the questions get posted when we're done? Back to the community. So looking forward to seeing you all back here after that show is done. So Tech Now is tomorrow. We also want to encourage you to go to the Customer Success Center depending on where you are in your customer journey, whether you're just getting started or you are well experienced, 10, 12 more years of ServiceNow experience, there's something in here for you, whether it's upgrading 
or implementing a CMDB or performance analytics and reporting or custom applications. There's a lot of great information and it's always being added to. So be sure to check the customer success center at servicenow.com slash success to get the most out of that. If I do write any script or code today, I will post it over to the GitHub repo there and the link in the YouTube and community and LinkedIn posts will point directly to today's folder if there is code. If there's no code, it will just point to the top level folder so you can go back and see what have we done over the past, well, I think we started this end of July, so just a couple of months and just a, a dozen or so folders at this point, but it will grow, so I wanted to make that direct link available to you. Good afternoon from Belgium, David Van Damme. Good to see you. Interesting topic for tech now, I hope so. I hope you enjoy that. So with that all out of the way and everybody gathered here watching, thank you very much. Again, if you're watching this later on YouTube or Twitch, thank you very much for watching that. You can always join live at 1 p.m. UTC on weekdays. Put it on your calendar if you like. Block it off so nobody else claims that part of your calendar. <laughs> Don't want people stealing your, your community live stream time. Your calendar is your own. Good morning, Kurti from India. Wow, we've got them all over the globe. I love it today. This is awesome. Let's get started on the community. And let's not press that button. I do that occasionally. Wrong keyboard. I have two keyboards. See, the dark one runs the video. The light one runs the community. So let's set that one aside for just a moment and get back to work on the community. If, if I hit... Command R to refresh on the white keyboard, it works well. If I command R on the black keyboard, things go crazy after a while. So, this is a one man show and it's a whole lot of fun. Unscripted, let's go to the unreplied messages, see what we've got there. How to use Cabrillo in a UI page. Ooh, that's going to be interesting because I don't believe Cabrillo and UI pages are compatible. But since I don't have an authoritative answer, and I am curious to know what the answer is, I'm simply going to subscribe. You can do that in the community. If it's a discussion you want to learn, you want to keep track of, you say, hey, put a pin in that. That's what I just did. Put a pin in it. Ichi knows. Sorry. Put a pin in it and come back, and we'll see what comes out of that. So I want to hide create problem when state in resolve state, and I want to hide create request when on hold state, any script, client script, or business rule. Create problem. This sounds like an incident. I don't know where else a create problem would be. Let's find out. Is this on the, this looks like the incident menu. Let's go to follow, update, incident, resolve, call state, on hold, reason, contact type. Okay. Create problem is a UI action. You control the states of the UI action when state is resolved state, and I want to hide create request. So what I would do, instead of modifying the out of the box UI action, okay, let's let's first look. Does create problem have? Let's leave that. Does it have a name in the action name field? That's what I want to know. So if I go to the form and I click configure, configure, er, navigate slowly, UI actions, and in here, I want the UI action, so that I can use this, Oop, use the magnifying glass, equals create problem. There it is, create problem. Does it have an action name? It does not which means I'm not gonna be able to do an override for this. Bummer, somebody who did an out of the box failed. Okay, always give your UI actions an action name. That's a best practice. If it has an action name, then you can override it, either on the same form or on an inherited table. Barring that, we can't make that recommendation. Okay, the visibility of a UI action, which is what is what your screenshot implies is showing is controlled by the conditions uh, condition field 
And that, my friends, is right down here. If you've done UI actions, those are the manual click, manual actions that you use. So current incident state is not incident closed. It has ITIL and current problem ID is not empty. So what you can do is add on to that, <coughs> excuse me, for example, if your, what was the state they were looking for? When state is resolved, I don't remember what the resolve number is, six, I think. Let's go find out. So back here, sorry about all the screen switching. Let's go back to uh, Liberty Gibbet. There it is, incident, new record. What is the state for resolve? Right click on that and you can see show choice list and it's going to bring up all of the choices on task, which I am just going to go back to all and say table equals incident and element equals state. You know, you can do that. It's very easy. Resolved is six. Whew, the old memory's working this morning. If your default condition looks like this, we'll put that into a little code block of JavaScript. Make that smaller so I can hit the OK. Make it bigger again so you can read. Then you would add ampersand, ampersand current dot state uh, equals six. All right. Let's add that in just so we have an example. JavaScript. That way they can copy and paste and current dots. Oh, not equal six. <laughs> that would be better, right? We want it to show up until it equals six. Yeah, let's do that. There we are. One down. We'll do a few new ones. We'll do a few replies. We'll see what's in the inbox. We'll, if we've got time, we'll do a new topic. That's kind of the show layout we've got here. Do, 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 do. What do we got next? I hit the bell, so let's move on. Adding a new field to all assets. Well, that should be easy if it's inherited. Let's find out. I would like to add a new choice field called risk management to all the assets. Is there a quick way to do that, or should I go one by one on each asset tab, such as business, service, service, computer? Yeah, if you add a field to a top level table like ALM underscore asset, it will add it to all inherited tables underneath that. Placing it on the form is a different situation. Okay, if you add a field, did I make that big again? If you had a field, if you add a field to a base table, one that extends another, it will automatically, it's the beauty about extended tables, one of the beauties, be added to all subclasses. For example, what did you want to call it? Business risk management. Adding risk management to ALM underscore asset and makes it available to all tables inherited from ALM asset. Adding it to the form is going to require some manual work, however. You can, now what I've seen is if you add a field through, say, Form Designer, of course it will place it on the Form Designer where you want, but that's only for the form you're looking at. So if I added it to the task form, it's not necessarily going to apply to incident or change or problem. It's, those have different form layouts and those are specific to those processes, pro use case. I wouldn't want the form designer, every time I added a field to task, to randomly place it somewhere, usually at the bottom of one of these other tables uh, or one of these other forms. Not the cleanest experience. You go, where did this come from? They did have to do a lot of cleanup. It's up to you to place it on the form. And if you watched last week, on each view of that form if you need it. So decide where and when you want to place this new field. There we are. Another one. We are flying through them today. 
Next, we have good morning to everybody who's joining. Hope you are having a wonderful day or had a wonderful day, depending on where you are. <clears throat> Let me do the unreplied and lubricate the old voice. Uh, populate assignment group. This sounds fun. This is the show where you not only get answers, but you get the logic and the thought process behind, if there is any logic, the thought process. We'll just go with that. The thought process behind the, uh, how I come up with this stuff. Hi, all I need to populate this particular ITSD owner group field to uh, field IT support group name by default when we create class is computer or when we update class is computer. You can do that through the assignment rules, all right? Assignment rules. I would not do this with script. Script is very hard coding and needs maintenance every time somebody says, hey, I'd like to change this. So let's look up the assignment rules. I wanna make sure that this applies to more than just task. So no, this looks like, yeah, these are task assignment definitions. So category, configuration, and location item. Okay, then I would go the extra mile instead of a one-line script or dictionary default. Uh, yeah, don't do that. The uh, Maybe a calculated value, but it still seems like code buried somewhere. I would look up data lookups and do it this way. So data lookups. I covered this last week, was it? Custom data lookup. Data lookup rules. There we are. I'm going to, hey, I wonder if this works here. I haven't tried this yet. So I installed a create link plugin in Chrome. So I'm going to do create link HTML and reply to this. Say, this could be done quite easily with script, but then you get into a maintenance headache. When someone wants to change the default assignment group, you have to go back to dev and make the change, then promote it to test, then into prod, blah. <laughs> yes, I'm going to spell blah. <laughs> You could avoid some of this by using a property, by creating and using a system property, and using a system property. But it still feels a bit hard-coded to me, anyway, in terms of script. My first recommendation is to look into building a uh, data lookup table. So you can simply match the criteria and set values. This implies that all matching criteria is on the record. You want to set i.e. no dot locking is involved. Oh, okay, that's cool. That copy link thing just paid for itself even though it was free. I know it's probably not gonna open in a target window blank, but hey, I'm saving time. Oh no, the stream went offline. What happened? Let's find out if we can, I'm gonna keep recording just in case, that way I can, there we are, back online. Still streaming, I believe, maybe, we're gonna see. Let's find out, make sure that the, uh, I, I do have a physical recording, so if this doesn't work live streaming, I will upload the MP4 right after. So just so you know that. 
in case anybody's out there listening. It could very well be an internet issue. Let's make sure that the internet is working. I'm just going to check my streaming computer and see if I can go to someplace normal. Yep, it might just be a bandwidth issue. Well, the good news is today is internet bandwidth upgrade day. <laughs> We will be upgrading the bandwidth. So if it is a bandwidth issue, we'll take care of that. Sorry for the minor outage. Uh, if you if you just coming back, I apologize. There was a, a blip in the recording. For whatever reason, Wirecast is still showing me a big red sign on the broadcast. So theoretically, I'm streaming because I can see it on the YouTube monitor. But Wirecast is telling me weird stuff. Okay. Let's keep going. Strange things may happen. The good news is it's internet upgrade day. I'm upgrading my bandwidth. I've got all the hardware in yesterday and I will hook it up and get it connected to the internet service provider. And hopefully this will be a thing of the past. We've got really, really fast hardware and now we'll get really, really fast bandwidth. Enough about the behind the scenes technicalities. Let's soldier on. If you missed it, I was doing a data lookup. That's why I have a monitor monitoring YouTube right there to make sure that everything is okay. It was not for a minute. So I go to reply there. I'm just going to do a quick refresh. Yeah, it is a bit blurry. I'm going to do a quick refresh here. The screen is blurry. I am blurry. Oh, a ref yeah, refresh your screen. If it's pixelated, just do a, a refresh on your browser window and it should look better. It does certainly does for me, although I'm not sure what's going on with Wirecast. It's still got a big red stop sign over the uh, streaming broadcast icon. Uh, I'll be unable to find valid certification path to requested target. I'm not sure what that means. We're going to take a look. It's in IT ser uh, it's in IT service management. Most of my stuff that I look at is in the developer portal because I'm into the custom applications platform integration, that kind of stuff. Uh, I can see and hear you as well. Let's donate some bandwidth. <laughs> if, if this was not funded by work in some way, shape, or form, if this was not related to work, if I was doing this personally, I would gladly accept donations, but I cannot at this point. I downloaded the site cert certificate from the browser and placed it in the trusted store. I do not know a whole lot about certs, but I'm always willing to learn more, so I'm going to subscribe to that one as well. We do have one thing in the mailbox, so I'm glad the streaming resumed on its own. Now, if you missed it, what what if this had totally bombed out, I would have kept going. And uh, I do have a backup recording of this being stored to my hard drive, so if the streaming ever goes completely south, I will upload that MP4 in place of it on YouTube, so you can always watch this later. So we can always uh, that, that that's uh, always have backups. Backups of recordings are good too. <laughs> good, glad to know F5 fixed it. Let's move on. Unable to find a failing widget. Take survey. How to use Cabrillo and UI page? We added inbound email action. Question mark. <laughs> I like that. It reminds me of the Cards Against Humanity cards that says bees. I have created inbound email action for one domain. How ah, we get into the domain separation. I've created inbound email action in global domain first and everything's fine. I'm triggering incidents as per the script. Once I have changed the domain in conditions from global to something I need, the incident is not creating. But in mailbox, shows processed. So is there anything in the logs? I, I really don't know what about domain separation and using inbound email actions again. I'm going to subscribe to that one. Let's see what happens. Intrusion detection system used by ServiceNow. That's in security. I'm not a security. I'm not an ITOM guy. Uh, how to make portal login page as default login, for instance. Ooh, good question. Good question. I've seen it a number of times. When you log in too high, it redirects you there. Now, I think it has to do... I, I don't even want to speculate. But let's... You know what? This portal login page... Let's just see what the docs say for us. Single sign-in logins and URL, redir URL redirects. You could do it with SSO, so that's a good question. Are you, let's get rid of that. Are you using SSO? I 
I've created a service portal page and a login page and a home page. I want to redirect the portal login page whenever I type my instance URL if it didn't log in. Okay, are you using change to new SP entry page, get login URL and glide entry page script, change SP entry page. Love the pictures. Pictures are worth a thousand words. Thank you. Let's go to, uh, are you using SSO? If you could do that, you could do a redirect, right? Otherwise, I don't know. Only assignment group members can assign tickets to their group. Our help desk manager only wants to allow members of the assignment group help desk to be able to assign incidents in the group. He's getting too many end users assigning tickets to their preferred help desk tech. What would be the easiest way to create such a rule? I only want to apply this rule to the help desk assignment group. It's getting too many end users. The end users shouldn't have access to those fields. Uh, restricting to help desk mean no, 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 no. Uh, I'm going to suggest that you check your ACLs to ensure assigned to and assignment group have the correct right access. Okay. End users should not be able to write to these fields. If you have an issue with the other ITIL users, e.g. networking, database, etc., cetera, uh, they do need to be able to modify the assignment group so they can always re-dispatch it to another group if it is incorrectly assigned. I recommend, I strongly recommend against a rule that says only the help desk can change the, did you say assignment group or sign two? He said ass assignment group members can able to assign ticket, yeah. Change the assigned to field when the group is assigned. Uh, the group is help desk. This can cause major issues later with your process. Seek first to get people to do the right behavior, and then use technology to enforce it. Don't rely on technology exclusively to enforce or to prevent bad behavior. Okay, I know that seems kind of odd. It's just like if you've got somebody in development who's got access to data, secure data, it's part of their job to know what the security rules are. You don't just say, hey, I'm in IT. I've got access to secure data. I'm going to post it on the internet. That will cost you your job. Okay. There, are, there are consequences of these actions. Uh, Andrew says, I'll validate, but think inbound actions have to stay in the global domain. Okay, good point. Andrew, if you want to jump in on that one, that would be awesome. It is 6.34. We had a little bit of a timeout issue. I'm not sure what's... Oh, hey, well, status is green again, so... Everybody's happy. I am going to switch gears and go to my links of things I saw, things I think I thought. And somebody asked a question on a blog article that I posted a couple of years ago, okay, seven years ago, <laughs> about using server-side functions in client scripts. This is a Glide Ajax, ex ex a, and I'm sorry, G scratch pad exercise. And somebody replied down here. I don't recall who it was at first. Let me show all comments. They said, hey, how do I use the 
scripts in, where was it, where was it? There. I need some examples of script includes without using return. Well, just leave off the return. I mean, a script include function can do something and not have to return a value. General programming says it's best to return some sort of status code. Did it work or did it not? A true or a false, a one or a zero, a minus one if there's no records read, that kind of stuff. It just, that's best practice. You don't have to, but I recommend that you do. How can I call script include on client script, both server side code and client callable code? So the answer to this one, and I forgot who did this. It was either uh, Stephen Bell or, or somebody like that that was doing a video on script includes. I don't think he built this up, but he did have a wonderful slide on it that said, you have your client script and the client script calls a client callable script include. Okay? That's our typical way that we do Glide Ajax is you have a client callable script include. So the client says, hey, I need some data. And the server says, oh yeah, I got a script include named get stuff and a function named <laughs> more stuff. And it returns the result back to the client script via an HTML, XML HTTP request, which we affectionately call Ajax or Glide Ajax using the Glide Ajax method. You can find out more about this in episode 33 of Tech Now. If you go to bit.ly slash servicenow dash tech now, click on episode 33 and you can watch the video there that we did a year or two ago. Anyway, if you've got code that you want to use in server-side functions, business rules, UI actions, workflow scripts, script actions, schedule jobs, whatever, you can put that into a standard script include. So I am going to attempt to build this all out. I have no idea what I'm going to write at this point, but I should have thought this out a little bit beforehand. And if I create, let's do, you know what? I rebooted this thing. So let's create my new version of the CLS app. Create an application for community live stream. I don't need a table in this. Uh, maybe I do, maybe I do. Okay, let's call it a CLS item. Sure, we'll auto number it as an ITM. Just going to create some basic, basic stuff. An app with a table and do the script include part. I don't have anything on that table right now, but that's okay. Open up my brand new app. And in there, I'm going to create a couple of things. So what I'm going to do first is a script include that runs the server side code. And my server side code will be called <laughs> server side code. How's that? Note that I am not going to check the client callable checkbox. So it gives me the standard prototype stuff. And in here, I will put in my item table equals X, S, and C. No, it's six, 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 six. What the heck is it? What's my table name? Can't remember? Open up the table. I love studios, multiple tabs for this reason alone. Copy this table name into this script include. Okay, I am just going to get a record of something. I don't even know what it is yet. And in here, I will have a get record, yeah, get record number. Just for lack of anything more fun to do. And we will pass it mm, a something. What do we need to pass it? A sys ID, a number? Here, let's get the record sys ID based on the number. There we go. Get record sys ID based on the number. And we will pass in the number. So, making it up as I go, the Indiana Jones method. Let's do that and say var uh, item gr equals new glide record item table. I will put this in the GitHub repo since I am officially writing code here. I am if item gr dot get number is bumped to something somewhere. Let's set that aside there for a second. Is the value of the number variable. If I can get that record by number, then I'm going to simply return item G 
gr.getUniqueValue. That's the sys ID. Otherwise, I am going to return a big fat null. So there is a script include, and I can do this. Let's refresh this, make a couple of demo records. Just to show that it, that part is working, we want to do a little unit testing, build a little at a time, make sure it works, then build a little bit more. So let's go to our CLS item table, create a new record. It only has a number, that's fine. This one also has a number, that's fine. We'll create a couple of more. And there we are, three records. Now, how do you test this? Uh, well, my computer rebooted, so I'm going to run Visual Studio Code as my editor, because it has a nice integration to GitHub. And it remembered what I kind of did Friday. That was a simple test script. Test the get record sys ID. Did I make that uppercase? I don't remember. I seem to be highly inconsistent when I do ID. Is ID two uppercase letters or is ID uppercase I lowercase D? Don't know. So var num equals ITM one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we could do a new server <laughs> side. Was that, that was really what I called it? Server side? Code. New server side code dot get record sys ID num. That's not going to do anything except return it. So let's do a quick GS info around that. Copy, paste, scripts background. And we get undefined, which means it didn't work. Something didn't work somewhere. Something is undefined. Did I type the number wrong? Let's go back to items. Oh, well, look, it started at 1,000. That's why we got bad test data. Paste that in there, try it again. I would have thought it would have said null, but null must be undefined. There we are. We got a society of record number one. So our server side code piece works. The next layer is let's build the client side piece. So to call this function, if I wanted to use this from a, uh, a scripting, a, a client script, I would put it in a client callable script include, and that would be the end of it but it doesn't allow me to use that function in uh, any other place, in, in any other server-side code. So I'm giving the ability by adding one more layer to this to address all server-side needs and all client script needs. So let's go and create a server-side script include, and we'll call this one client-side code. Check this box. It, I often forget it. I really, really often forget it. And it changes the default down here. And in there, I can start creating my functions. Get record by, well, this is the, the client script. I want to show that it's two different functions. We're just going to do a get record ID function. And we'll pass this one a number as well. No, we don't pass anything from a client script. Shame on me, I forgot. And it's been a while since I wrote a Glide Ajax client script. So I'm going to go over to developer.servicenow.com and look up the Glide Ajax reference. Because I can't remember, I know sysparm name. <laughs> That's about all I remember. And especially parsing the result back always gets fun. I am on London. My personal developer instance is on London. I like to see the London docs. Not that Glide Ajax has changed a whole lot. But my client script is going to look something like that. And what I like to do to just start is client development, client script, put that on the item table. Of course, there's going to be several item tables. Let's do this CLS. There aren't too many CLS item tables, right? This is going to run globally on the desktop. It's going to be an, we can do 
and unload. Let's do an on change. We'll put another field up there. We don't have a field that created is not going to change. We need another field, something that we can change. Let's do a simple true false. That'll be easy. Okay, so we'll call this one active. It'll be a true false. And I don't care what it defaults to. So where's my client script? Client script is going to probably need to reload this. Where'd my cursor go? Come here, cursor. There it is. Lost it. Let's reload this so that it has the current list of fields available to this table. And I should see active show up. Active didn't show up. There it is. It's being slow. Slow, slow, slow. Field name is, finish loading please. On change on the item table. Waiting, waiting. There it is, active. So when active changes, I am going to run some code like this. Is that the whole code? Do I have two on changes in there? That's missed. Okay. So I do want this level of code. We need hello world is the script include class. We don't need that. Our script include is called client side code. Our function is get record ID. Those are special. All right, this is the name of the script include client ID and get record ID, just to make sure I didn't type that wrong. Paste it there, looks good. That is the method or the function we're going to call. And any parameters we want to put in here, go here. Commonly prefixed with sysparm underscore. So let's put sysparm underscore number and that will be gform.getValue of number. This is a really stupid exercise because you can just get the sys ID, but I'm going to show you how you can get it from the server rather than. And then we are going to call a callback function. This is going to run asynchronously, which all of your client scripts should do, except those nasty on submit ones. So let's call the, we're just going to call this ID parse. And down here is the ID parse function. Make sure that the capital is right. And it's going to take a response, which it gets back and draws out the XML from that of answer. And let's put up the answer there. It's gonna be really fun. Now, my client script on the other, that's the client script. I need to also get the server side code of that which looks like do 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 add param no i need the i need the get param it's get parameter so here's the tricky part in my client script move cursor move i know my mouse battery isn't dying i just charged it up in my client script i do an add param to push this make this available to the server side code in the client side code, I need to retrieve it. And that's done with this dot get parameter. Sysparm, one word, number. That's how we get the number out of that. And I need to save that somewhere. So I can say var num equals that. And now I can call the server side code. So var id equals um, new server side code. No, just pass that and get the result back. No, that's not right. That's the name of the class. The function is get record. I can't remember these names. I know I made them different for a reason. Now I can't remember them. Get record sysid. 
copy, paste, just so we don't make any goofy mistakes. Get record society. Done and done. Well, we got to pass the number to it. That's going to get the society back. Now we send that back to the client script that way. Is that the right way? My mouse is giving me more problems than I wish for today. I'm not sure why. Will it work better? I wonder if it's just that's better. It was where my mouse was tracking on the desk. So Glide Ajax, we need the, for whatever reason, we don't have the client code or the server code in here anymore. That's kind of a bummer. Get parameter is not found on this page. We used to have the whole sample code in there. Alrighty. Back to the studio. Save that. And our client script hasn't really done, it just doesn't alert. That's right. Did it save? There we go. Slow browser, take a drink. Haven't done that in a while. <sighs> Must be internet upgrade day. Excellent, excellent. Saving, saving, and the stream went out. Come on. Terrible, terrible, something happened. Well, if I can't save the code and I can't stream, then this might be the end. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> For that, I will offer you the recording on here and find out what's going to happen next. It hasn't recovered on its own. So apologize. I'm going to do a quick refresh just to make sure that, uh, yeah, things are, things are offline in terms of streaming capabilities again. So I'm going to finish this up. I will do the test. I will post the code and I will get that to you as soon as possible. Well, it appears that it's still streaming. And it finally saved. So, false alarm. We're going to keep soldiering on. Wow, YouTube and the internet are being really interesting today. Whew. People are dropping off because they think it's dying. Okay, so where was I going? I was going to the item table. And I was going to just see if the... Where was it? It was CLS. CLS is a better way. Community live stream and my active field should call and get that society. So this one runs in 1050E46. The next record gets 1050E69, different society. So it's going from client script to client callable script include to server side script include and then returning that number back up the stack. So. It, very easy to do. You make your code available to server side with that core functionality, like I showed here. Core functionality is in the server side code. You can put whatever you want in there. Complex logic, simple logic. You can put your client callable script include, which gathers up the parameters, calls the server side script include, and returns it to the client script. This is sort of a, a shim or an intermediary, if you will. And then finally, your client script, which starts calling things. I can always make that a little prettier while I'm here. That's better. So that's how you can make that available. All that from one comment from a seven-year-old blog. Crazy, isn't it? But I hope you learned something. If you found something useful in this video, please be sure to click the like button so that others can figure out that <laughs> there's, there's something useful in here. Uh, with that, I'm not going to press my luck any further. I'm going to call it a day, get this posted to you, and wish you the best of Mondays. And with any luck, I will see you again here Tuesday. No show Wednesday or Thursday because I will be at Developer Days in San Diego. If you happen to be there, you can meet me there. I will also be in... Sydney in for Now Forum, which I believe is the 10th and 11th. I will be in London. I will be in Munich. I will be in Melbourne. So if you happen to be in any of those areas and you want to have a meetup, 
let me know. Give me a shout out. Servers, uh, Chuck.Tomasi at servicenow.com. Send me an email or drop me a message on LinkedIn, wherever you happen to find that. Um, be happy to do my best. Can't make any promises, but do my best to have a meetup. Looks like we are going to have a London social meetup at Now Forum in London. So could be a pub, could be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Still working out the details with James Neal. So until tomorrow, got through that one. I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Bye.